Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. I'm asking again the same question that I've asked many times before. Can Democrats go anywhere? Are they really as popular as they say they are? Well, based on certain anecdotal evidence, it seems as though not so much, not so popular at all. How many videos have we made of popular mainstream top brass Democrat politicians or Democrat connected individuals getting booed off stages? From Nancy Pelosi to Jill Biden to Ilhan Omar to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, of course Joe Biden as well, it always leads to the same question, can these people go anywhere? And of course another question is, where are their supporters if they're supposedly so popular? And just to add insult to injury, probably one of the craziest parts of this phenomenon is that we keep getting examples of Democrats getting heckled off stage, Democrats getting booed in stadiums, in places where you would suspect that they'd be most popular. The most infamous example, I mean, Joe Biden recently getting heckled in California of all places. The most infamous moment was Democrat Ilhan Omar going on stage in her district in Minnesota during a Somali cultural event, a concert, a place where you would suspect she'd be the most popular person in the venue. She got booed into oblivion. And now to add another example, Kamala Harris makes a surprise appearance at an NCAA March Madness tournament basketball game between her alma mater, Howard University, and their opponents, and supposedly based on on Associated Press reporting, she as well got booed into oblivion. The description of the event claims that the boos were so significant and so loud that they overtook the cheers. Let me show you guys what's going on and let's continue to talk about this ghostly popularity of these Democrat figures. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, take a look at the headline from the conservative brief. Kamala Harris booed at her alma mater's basketball game. Vice President Kamala Harris did not have the start to the college basketball championship tournament that she would have wanted. She was booed at the game where the college she attended, the HBCU Howard University, was bounced by Kansas in a blowout, Newsweek reported. Now the audio in the clip isn't very clear. You can take a look for yourself. Here at the White Hall, oh, there she is, Vice President Kamala Harris, second gentleman, Doug Inhofe. Class of 1986, I was most famous alumni. We're getting numerous credible reports from people who were actually there at the event, claiming that Kamala Harris was in fact booed quite aggressively by the crowd. Here's a report from Breitbart.com. Harris came out to show support for her college team as Howard University faced Kansas at the Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines, Iowa. But many decided to show how little they supported Harris back as boos outweighed the cheers when her name was mentioned, according to Fox News. Another Another hugely embarrassing moment for Kamala Harris. At this point, they're really starting to stack up. Actually, here's a blast from the past. Remember back in 2020 when Kamala Harris was on the campaign trail and she made an unannounced campaign visit to a Venezuelan restaurant in South Florida? And let's just say it didn't go so well for her. But a restaurant owner is speaking out about the fallout after a visit from Democratic vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris. And hi, Jackie, this area was buzzing yesterday when Senator Kamala Harris dipped into this restaurant here unannounced. It's a maize Latin flavor pretty popular Venezuelan and other Latin flavors served here. So yesterday's visit, Jackie, is not getting great reviews today. There, in fact, there's even internet chatter encouraging a boycott of this restaurant. An executive with the restaurant told him Mrs. Harris wasn't welcome here yesterday. We don't use the company for uh, uh, political reasons. Andres Garcia, not pleased with Senator Kamala Harris's visit to his restaurant yesterday. The owner of the restaurant claiming Kamala Harris was not welcome. It's been years of public humiliation and PR disasters, and if you think it ends with her getting booed, well, certainly not. Kamala Harris is also getting absolutely roasted online for her post-game speech. Vice President Kamala Harris delivers a post-game message to the Howard University men's basketball team. You played hard, you played to the very last second. You made all us bison so, so proud. You hustled out there, you are smart, you are disciplined, you put everything you had into the game. And you know, that's what it's about, right? Until the last minute, you guys did that. You didn't stop until the last second you did not stop. And that is so inspiring. So you keep playing with chin up and shoulders back. Because you showed the world who bison are, right? I mean, you, literally what you have done is in historic proportion. 
Twitter's having an absolute field day with this one. Every team that loses should have to listen to this as punishment. After losing in the NCAA tournament, the team had to get a locker room speech from Kamala Harris. You can literally feel the cringe in the room. I'm speechless. Truly feel bad for these guys. They lost the game and then had to be subjected to this speech. Seriously cruel to subject these players to one of her inane speeches. I voted Democrat for 30 years and this video has made me switch parties. You'd think that she was speaking to a room full of three-year-olds with that pep talk. I agree and I can't think of anything more painful. Imagine feeling dejected after getting kicked out of a massive tournament and then being subjected to Kamala Harris cackling. <laughs> I seriously cannot think of anything worse. But it doesn't end there for more embarrassing moments involving Kamala Harris. We've been covering her train wreck appearance on the Stephen Colbert show. I believe that was two days ago, if I'm not mistaken. What we didn't cover, however, was the crowd that was there to greet her. Vice President Kamala Harris, when it was announced that she was going to be making an appearance on Stephen Colbert's show, well, a bunch of people showed up. <laughs> Not exactly a vice presidential welcome, I'd say. And here's where I'm always asking the same question. Why is it that everywhere these Democrats tend to go, they get met with boos and heckles and protests? Yet the media keeps telling us just how truly incredible and popular these individuals are. You know, of course, it's all anecdotal evidence. But the question that I'm asking myself is, there should at least be another side to it, right? You know, Donald Trump, for instance, gets protested most places that he goes, but the crowd of protesters are generally a fraction, a tiny, tiny little fraction, a little dot in the crowd of supporters. The people who are heckling and booing tend to be insignificant or overpowered by the overwhelming support. When it comes to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, the most popular president slash vice president duo in American history based on votes in the 2020 election, yet their fans, their staunch supporters are nowhere to be seen. I mean, we're talking about New York City. If I'm not mistaken, I believe there's roughly 20 million people who live in New York City. We're talking about some of the highest population density in the world. The vice president of the United States is announced to be on Stephen Colbert's show. Her motorcade is coming in and nobody shows up except for people there to heckle her. Kamala Harris isn't the most popular vice president in American history. She's the most insignificant and least popular vice president in American history. Without the entire leftist media apparatus, people like Kamala Harris and Joe Biden would be utterly insignificant. They're not charismatic. They don't have grassroots support. Their political careers are simply carried by a media that targets the uninformed voter. People who aren't paying attention, people who are just voting because I mean, society says I should vote, so I'm just going to vote. They turn on the TV. The TV box basically tells them, vote for Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, and so they do it. It's not organic. It's not real grassroots support. They're deeply insignificant, unpopular figures. And that's frankly why I laugh at the idea that somehow Donald Trump isn't electable. Find me another politician who can snap their fingers and raise $100 million for their campaign efforts. Doesn't happen. Doesn't exist. Find me another GOP candidate who stands a chance at taking on the entire leftist media machine. It's fake versus real. There's real politicians who have real grassroots support, real charisma, real fans, and then there's fake establishment props. Without the media, without the propaganda, without the control over information and the flow of it, people like Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren wouldn't even exist. That's the video, though. That's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Of course, you know that we would love to have you here. Thanks for watching, friends, and I'll see you on the next one.